California, I guess, but they're the surfers. They have a certain look, a certain lifestyle, a certain attitude, a way of dress. You know, I mean, the guys would like bleach their hair with peroxide. They're really into it. You know, I mean, they wanted to. They had that bleach, sun bleach look. And there's the surfers, and then there's the greasers and the hodads and all that kind of stuff. They're different sub-ethnic groups, you know. <laughs> so we were in part of the surfers, you know. Whether you could surf or not was not the point. It was like a whole attitude, dress, lifestyle. It's kind of like Valley Girls or something. I was on a surfboard once and I almost got my head cut off. The, the board just missed my head. The tip of the board went, whizzed past my head and I was scared to death. I never got on again. Being interested in the water and in water sports more than actually participating, uh, he understood what a trip it was and pretty much how visual it was and that there would be kids in Minneapolis that would be interested in, in visualizing what it would be like to be in the water. And that was probably more important than doing it. And we found that to still be true to today. It's the consciousness more than it is the physicalness of really doing it. Uh, you know, I mean, we spent, you know, a lot of time in the water doing body surfing and boogie boarding and, and uh, sailing and those kinds of things. So it wasn't really just generically surfing. It was kind of the whole lifestyle that we were really talking about, although everybody chose to zero in on, on surfing. We're really not. I mean, we do do surf music, and it just so happens that uh, most of the biggest instrumentals, or a lot of them in, in combo style, are of the uh, surfing genre. But uh, I remember reading an article once that said uh, that uh, the term surfing music wasn't really coined until 1963 or something like that.